Hey church, I hope you're having an amazing Sunday and welcome to Saint Online. Now before hearing our message from Nye, one of our pastors here at Saint, we're going to be having a time of worship together. So before we go into that, why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, will you come and meet with us right now? Will your Holy Spirit fill us, fill the room around us, fill all the people that we're with? And Father, will you bless all those watching? Will you come and let them know how loved and known they are by you? Amen. Let's worship. All creation shouts your praise. Good, good God. Lord, the author of my day. Holy and exalted, lifted high, down through the ages, be glorified. All creation shouts your praise, good, good God, Lord, the author of my days, faithful one. Holy and exalted, lifted high, down through the ages.
come on, come on. We bow down, yeah. We bow down before. We give you all our lives. We give you all our lives. Come on, praise. say it today. We bow down, yeah. We bow down before you. Say we bow, we bow down. down. We bow down before you. We give you all our. We give you all our praise. Yeah. Thank you, Father. God, worthy of all our worship. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much to our worship team for leading us through that worship. But now we're going to have a time looking at all that's happening across the Saint family. So over to Al and Church News.
Hey church, I hope you're well. Welcome to Saint News Summer Special. The vision of Saint is to bring hope to the people of East London. We're one church meeting across multiple locations. Now there's so much going on at church this August and September. There are lots of ways that you can get involved. Throughout the summer, after each of our services, wherever you're watching this, there is a chance to get to know new people, to meet the team and hear about the vision of the church. Just come and introduce yourself. Alternatively, let us know that you're new by filling in one of these join-in cards. Or if you're watching this online, head over to saint.church slash join in and someone will be in touch with you and make sure that you feel right at home. Now, if you've never done Alpha, this autumn is a great time to start Alpha. Alpha is a free course helping you explore life's big questions, the basics of the Christian faith, to ask honest and open questions in a really relaxed environment. The next Alpha starts on Wednesday, the 6th of October. And this autumn, we're running Alpha both in person, across four locations, and online as well. So there's really gonna be something for everyone watching wherever you are. Before I did Alpha, pretty much I was working a lot. That was kind of like my way of like coping with my anxiety and depression. And I kind of wasn't finding a way to kind of like solve that. I'd kind of like driven away from like a lot of old good friends. Honestly, I pretty much hit rock bottom. Um, but like ultimately, I was pretty much just trying to find myself and my identity and just who I am. I was kind of like, I want to make that step to start to understand who God is and who Jesus is. And so when like the opportunity came up again, I thought, you know what, I might as well just try Alpha. So I didn't really know what to say or if my opinion would be a bit like out there, but my group was so lovely and they kind of just eased me into it. So a lot has changed. I committed my life to Christ and I've started to reach out to my friends and just like seek forgiveness, but also forgive them. Just go for it pretty much because Jesus has honestly changed my life. Next, we have some really exciting news. Across East London, this autumn term, we are launching a bunch of new services and gatherings. At our West Ham location, we are launching a brand new 4.30 service aimed at local families, those young adults who wouldn't normally get out of bed and come to church on a morning of a Sunday. And it's gonna be absolutely incredible, led by our amazing location pastors, Sai and Chloe Nichols. And I can't wait to see what's gonna happen in West Ham. Then in Shoreditch, we're launching a brand new midweek service on a Wednesday lunchtime starting this September. If you live and work in the Shoreditch area or in the city, it'll be an amazing hour of worship, encouragement, inspiration to help equip you to live your best life in your workplace. And it'll be led out of our Shoreditch location by Toby Thomas and an amazing team of people. Again, you can head to saint.church slash Shoreditch and find out how you can get involved. And then finally, if you're over in Leighton, I'm really excited to announce that Steve and Sarah Opie are joining the Saint family to lead our Leighton location, which is an amazing blessing to our church. They're brilliant. Alongside Colette and Nate and the whole team there, we're gonna be relaunching the 11 a.m. family service with a whole load of new groups, kids work activities going on. And again, I would love to encourage you to get involved, helping, serving, finding a way to make a difference in the neighborhoods of East London. You can again find out more about this at saint.church slash Stay tuned, we're gonna be praying for these new services. And for now, the final thing to let you know about, a date for your diary. As a church, we have this vision to play our part in seeing a renaissance of the culture. And this November 19th and 20th, we are launching a brand new conference called Renaissance. It's a creative conference for innovators, entrepreneurs, musicians, artists, creatives, in fact, anybody who wants to see the world made better. And you can join us for those two days. It's gonna be mind blowing. And all the details of who's involved are on our website, saint.church slash renaissance. Make sure you save a seat because tickets are launching soon and they're gonna go really quickly. 
So that's all we've got time for now. I hope you're having a great summer. God bless you, and I'll see you really soon. Thank you so much, Al. Now, next up, we're going to be hearing from Nai, one of our pastors here at Saint. And over the summer, we are looking at a talk series, Questions Jesus Asked. So over to you, Nai, to hear the next talk in our series. Today, we continue our series on Questions Jesus Asked. And this week's question is, do you want to get well? A question that Jesus poses to a disabled man who's been waiting for healing for 38 years. Whether it's physical or emotional, spiritual or relational, we all know what it is to wait and to hope. Yet God does not leave us in our circumstances, but he calls us to partner with him to create new ones. He says, get up when we've all but given up. And as we'll see in the passage, God can do the seeming impossible. Our reading today is found in John 5, verses 1 to 10. Some time later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. Do you want to get well? What a question. I mean, I think so. I think that I do. And yet, like this man, I know how often my yeses to God have come with conditions. Yes, but. Well, maybe if I have some more time. Is anyone else a bit guilty of trying to do faith on their own terms or is it just me? Yet this story is not one of condemnation, but one of mercy and freedom. In Aramaic, Bethesda means the house of mercy or the house of grace. It was a place where dozens of people would lay waiting for a glimpse of healing, for a glimpse of freedom. It was a place where those who felt forgotten and looked down upon could gather on the literal edges of society, hoping that they could get close enough to this water, close enough to healing, longing to be a new creation. Sometimes faith can feel like that, right? Like you're really close, but you're just observing rather than participating. And yet whilst they were looking at the water, there was Jesus among them with the authority and power to save, with the ability to make them the new creations that they were longing to be. Now, for those of you who might be unfamiliar with this story, the reason they waited was because legend had it that an angel would touch the waters and that one person and one person only could be healed. Yet what seems in short supply without Jesus is so often abundant with him. And so this unnamed man didn't have to wait for people to help him. He didn't have to rush or compete to get to the waters first. He simply received a word from Jesus and immediately it transformed his life. There might be an area in your life where you have been longing to see breakthrough. And you're sat here today going, does God even see me? Does he even remember the promises that he spoke over my life? 
Well, hear his reply to you again, that he sees the one in a crowd of people, that he sees the weariness of waiting for something that hasn't quite arrived, but he is still able to do it, even when it seems impossible. Scripture says that the man had laid waiting there for 38 years. 38 years of believing that he was nothing more than an invalid. 38 years of cementing an identity around his weaknesses and his flaws. But that one thing did not define him. Like you and I, he was a child of God. He was a part of the very humanity that Jesus came to save and redeem. There might be labels that you've long accepted, or perhaps an area of your life where you've lost confidence that God is still going to move. But I want to pray that God would rebuild your faith, because even a 38-year-old stronghold is no obstacle to God, to the one who is Lord over all creation. You see, this is a message of freedom. God wants to speak with authority to whatever is hindering you today. And yet, perhaps like me, you see something of yourself in this man. I want to be well, Jesus, but... But I feel alone in this struggle. But I feel pushed out by others. But I've run out of options and I just can't see a way through. Maybe you've tried to fix things in your own strength and it just hasn't worked. Why not let God carry that burden instead? Why not let God swap your plans for his, your weakness for his strength? Speaking candidly, I know that that's how I came to faith. I'd been trying my whole life to be everything that everyone else needed me to be. A good daughter, a good sister, a good student, a good cousin to play the part and seem like I had it all together when that couldn't be further from the truth. And when I had simply run out of rope, I found myself calling out to a God who I didn't even know existed. And as his kindness, the spirit fell. And in that dorm room at uni at 21 years old, I can honestly say that the first emotion I felt was relief. Relief that someone else would protect me. Relief that there was someone who would look out for me and show me how to live a life of freedom instead of one defined by pressure, labels, and expectations. You know, I think there's so much more to this story than physical healing. When Jesus asks, do you want to get well? I can't help but think that he was speaking directly to the heart. Because when we walk through difficulties, when we go through struggles and missed opportunities, we tend to develop habits that, as comfy as they may feel, are actually a barrier between us and God. We put up guards and walls. We try to do faith with none of the vulnerability. Quietly, but sure enough, it's like our fears crowd out the room for our faith to grow and we just reach out for those tried and tested safety blankets. But God wants all of us. He wants the rough and the smooth. He wants your heart and your mind. And if he's going to heal it, you've got to let him in to do so. God never forces. If we want him to speak into our lives, we need to permit him. We have to let go of the reins and say, have your way, God. And when we do, he releases us from being defined by our weaknesses to being defined by our relationship. We are his, his children, his beloved, his friends. This is the good news. This news that Christ died to reconcile humanity to God. If you've been here long enough, you'll have heard me say, hi, I'm Nai, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. But after reading this passage, I'm challenged and it feels more appropriate to say, hi, I'm Nai, I'm a new creation. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It's not about criticizing myself or being falsely humble. I need to give God glory with the way I spend my time and energies, with the choices I make and the willingness to open myself up to God. God doesn't want to define you by your weaknesses. He has so much for you, so much better than whatever it is you're settling for. And I promise you, there is no thing that he cannot heal, no thing he cannot redeem, no thing that he cannot set you free from. His grace and his power are bigger than your past hurts. They're truer than harsh words that you might use or that might have been spoken over you. 
And God is as kind as he is powerful because in all of this, he doesn't condemn you. Rather, he asks, do you want to be well? So church, do you? This isn't a message of condemnation. This is a time to receive God's grace again. So as we head into a time of worship, we pray, come Holy Spirit, to the one who is called our advocate, our counsellor, and our friend. Amen. Amen.
You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And you're perfect. And you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Sing that again. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Well, thank you so much to Nye and the worship team for leading us today. Well, why don't we actually leave a comment below telling us your favorite part of the service today or even share this video with someone who you think will enjoy it. Well, that's all we've got time for today. So have a great week and see you next Sunday.